Hi and welcome to Safe Driver Training. In this video we will discuss a ferry crossing variation of the work time and logbook rule 2007. There are a few situations that allow you to vary work time restrictions without written approval from NZTA Transport Agency. One of such variations is a ferry crossing that takes longer than one hour in duration. Clause 2.2 of the rule states following. A driver may count as rest break a scheduled vehicle ferry trip of more than one hour's duration, including time spent in the vehicle while the ferry is sailing. At the end of the ferry trip, a vehicle may be driven to a place of storage or safe parking location, even if in doing this the driver's work time for that community work day will be extended, provided that the additional period of work time does not exceed one hour from the arrival of the ferry. And continuous rest break of at least 10 hours is taken immediately afterwards. The variation allows for the transporting of freight that cannot be parked for extended periods of time without special attention. For example, dangerous goods and livestock. It also allows the drivers to drive to a location with suitable facilities so that they can have a quality rest. When using ferry crossing variation, there are strict recording requirements for your logbook, such as the departure and arrival time for the ferry must be noted in the driver's logbook as the start and the end of the rest break as well as all other legal requirements. The extended cumulative work day must be recorded in the driver's logbook and, and form part of the continuous record for that cumulative work period. Just to clarify recording requirements. Departure means the time when ferry departs its berth. It's not the time when the vehicle is driven onto the ferry, nor it's the time when the driver arrives to the ferry terminal. Arrival means the time when the ferry arrives at its destination and ready to discharge the vehicles. It's not the time when the vehicle is driven off the ferry. Let's look at the logbook scenario when we can use the ferry crossing variation to extend our cumulative work day. In this situation, your maximum allowable work time for your community work day expires after you've driven your vehicle onto the ferry crossing. Let's fill out the logbook entries. At the top of the logbook, you will record your name, you will choose the start time for page, and you will record the date of your community work day. Because it's a new community work period, we must record our days off at the top of the logbook page and the end of the last 24 hour break field will be the date when you start your cumulative work period. We start our shift at 7 o'clock in Christchurch and slowly make our way to ferry terminal in Picton. On our way to Picton we have a couple of breaks and at 8 o'clock the ferry departs to Wellington. At 11.30, the ferry arrives at Wellington Terminal and you started your way towards a safe parking overnight. Because you ran out of the space on one page, you have to use the second page to complete your cumulative work day. As usual, you will record the top of the logbook as required and you will record your activity. At 12.30, you arrive to Pororua for your safe parking and you must take your 10 hour break before starting a new cumulative work day. At 10.30 in Pororua, you started your next cumulative work day. The use of ferry crossing variation in this situation increases the length of your cumulative work day beyond 24 hours. Now let us see when use of ferry crossing variation cannot be used to extend your cumulative work day. In this situation, your maximum work time expires prior to driving your vehicle onto the ferry. We'll record our logbook entries at the top of the logbook page and we start our shift at 7 o'clock at Christchurch and then we make our way towards ferry terminal at Picton. Well, and we will have a couple of breaks on the way through. At 8.30 you arrive to Picton and you finish your community work day at 9 o'clock and start your rest time. 
on the next logbook page you record the information in the top part of the logbook entry and also you must show your 10 hour break before you start a new cumulative work day. The driver must complete 10 hour break before driving the vehicle onto the ferry. You start your new cumulative work day at 7 o'clock and at 7.30 the ferry depart towards Wellington and then you work further through the day. Workday must end at 9 p.m. in order to complete 10 hour break no more than 24 hours after starting cumulative work day. Three and a half hours traveling on ferry can be counted as rest time but cannot extend cumulative work day. If you take the three and a half hours as rest time, you must record the departure and arrival of your ferry in a rest time column. Now you know how and when to use a ferry crossing variation. As always, safe driving to you.